and welcome to That's Girl Speaks. Today is Thursday, October 8th, and this is episode 281. I am Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. It might be a little noisy today. I have the window open because like it's just too lovely. And I don't know, we're at that place in the year. Um, it's, you know, the beginning of October. And like, I just, I was taking, I had to take my vacuum in to get it repaired. And I had to go to the other side of town, the northern side of town. And um, it's weird. Like the north part of Indianapolis is definitely the fancier part of Indianapolis. And apparently they also get all the trees, which... <laughs> I didn't really realize it until I went to take this vacuum back and I was like, whoa, how is it fall up here already? And like, I didn't realize it was fall yet. It is because they just have a lot more trees where I'm driving. We have lots of, like we live right across the street from a park, but like where I am driving through on my side of town, like I'm not usually driving around or if I am, I guess there's not as much variety in the kinds of trees. Those fancy northerners, they got all the good trees. Anyway, I just had this like really like intense, like almost like maudlin, like drive where I was like, oh my gosh, the fall is here and I haven't even enjoyed it yet. And I got really emotional. <laughs> you know, anything will make you emotional this year, won't it? <laughs> I guess because of that, I've been trying to get outside as much as I can. I've not gotten nearly as much work done as I should because I'm just like, yes, let's go on 75 bike rides. Yes, can we go somewhere else? And I'm usually not a goer at all, but I'm telling you. Oh, some, somebody asked in the show notes last time what I do to button up our garden for the fall. Uh, nothing. <laughs> I'm kind of the worst. Like there is no homeowners association where I live. Um, because all they would do would rewrite me letters. But uh, like I literally don't do anything. I just let things die off. And then usually like there's a warm day in February and I'm like, oh, we should probably take some of that dead vegetation down. <laughs> Like I'm, I'll bring in like tomato cages if, if we're using tomato, like last year we used tomato cages. Like I'll bring in that kind of stuff, but everything else, like I just left our, um, like my runner beans this year I used and last year for my cucumbers and my runner beans last year too. Yeah. I used this just like, um, like I'm some sort of poly cord netting that's made specifically to be like a vegetable running system. And I left that out all year last year. And it seems to be in perfect condition, so I'm gonna do it again this year. <laughs> but yeah, I just let everything die and then like when it starts when it's cool enough in the like early or late winter, I kind of or when it's warm enough, excuse me, in the late winter, I just go down and hack stuff up and chop it up and put it in the compost bin. <laughs> But I don't know about you, but like by the first frost, I'm usually like having a party because I'm like, oh, you know, it's like time to transition into home stuff, which I love so much. And like maybe I'm done canning tomatoes just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. So I don't really do anything. I did finally can up all of my apples. My applesauce just wasn't that great this year. So I may have messed up. Like last year I got my family to finally eat the applesauce that I make. And so that was super exciting that they were super on board with the applesauce. And then I think I've messed it up this year because the applesauce wasn't the best. I don't know. I'm just living under the false delusions that put it in a can and it'll get like put it in a jar and it'll get better. <laughs> Even though the point of it being in a jar is that like nothing is supposed to happen to it. But anyway, it was just kind of like, even though I let my apples sit longer, it just still kind of like had like a sort of, I don't know, it was just not complex enough. I don't know. Maybe I've lost my applesauce mojo. Maybe just one year was like an excellent 
here for the apple? I don't know what's going on. Whatever. It is what it is. What else has been going on? I still am getting green beans, which is so exciting. Most of my plants have kind of died off, but there are these last plants that I plant, the last plants that I planted out, the last seed I planted out, those plants are still going and still producing really beautiful beans. And I had put in some bush beans where my potatoes were that we took out. And you know what? I just don't like bush beans. I, di I didn't think I did, but I was like, maybe I'm just not remembering correctly. Yeah, I don't, I don't like bush beans. Or at least none of the varieties I've tried. Die Hard, die hard Runner Bean. Oh my gosh. Did you see Close to Amish? They have a podcast. I think it's called The Bearded Pearl. Pretty sure. I'm going with it. They grew a bunch of um, dried bean varieties this year. And they're harvesting them. And it's so exciting. And next year, I'm going to definitely be doing some dried runner beans. I bought some to do this year. But then, like, it just didn't make it happen in time. Um, so next year, I'm going to do it. I need a bigger yard. <laughs> That's actually not true. I just need to take over more of my yard, which I think I will be doing next year. <laughs> I'm out of control. Um, I visited with a friend of my mom and we were talking about canning and stuff. She's like, oh, so like how big is your yard? Are you like on a quarter acre? And I'm like, I think my yard might be 1,200 feet. <laughs> That's not true. I don't know how exactly big it is. But it's not very big. It's a city backyard. And it has a garage on one side of it. So it's, it's really not big. I'm just looking at that house next door like, I want to take over that lot so bad. Oh, speaking of which, not really at all. But one of the things I was listening to this week is, I don't know, um, I've talked about it before, is the um, Crazy Town podcast, which I have enjoyed. I don't listen to it religiously. Um... But I do really enjoy it. And this week they had an episode. They're kind of on hiatus right now. So they had... Um, where is it at? They had... They're like featuring other podcasts. And so one of the, the episodes that I listened to was... Um, Decon... No, that wasn't it. Oh, come on. Okay, it was, uh, the podcast is Green Dreamer, um, and so they, they feature Jason Bradford, who is one of the, um, one of the people who produces the Crazy Hub podcast. Um, so Green G Dreamer with Kamea Chain, I'm guessing is how you say that. She probably said it and I've already forgotten. Um, but that was so good. If you've never listened to their podcast, so it's a podcast about, like, that's about a lot of different stuff, but it's primary focus I guess is on I don't even know if you get him but anyway it's a it has a lot to do with like degrowth of our economy and like future of um fossil fuels and energy sources and talking about like how you know we move forward into a place where those things are rapidly you know they're not going to be available for us to use and it talks a lot about like like human labor versus energy and like those anyway because their podcast is just such a big ball, um, because of course when you're talking about environment that impacts just about everything. Um, I thought this was a really great episode that kind of gave like a cliff's notes to a lot of the ideas that are presented and had a lot of, it, anyway, I found it to be very interesting. I know, right, I'm the worst when I say that. I recommend it. Is that any better? <laughs> but I really enjoyed the interview and I thought it would be a good, if you feel like you've ever kind of entered into their podcast and just felt like you were kind of unmoored and not sure, like it, it was a great place to enter into their podcast, obviously, because somebody else is essentially doing that for you. Like the interviewer is kind of giving you a basis of their, or at least of his, um, ideas and thoughts. And it was, yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit. What were we talking about when I went off on that tangent? I guess that takes us into shenanigans of the mind. Sorry, Siren. 
Um, this week's episode, I have a giant table of stuff to talk about. This week's episode will contain shenanigans of the mind. It'll contain sewing. It'll contain knitting. And it'll contain shameless self-promotion at the end because uh, I accidentally bought more fall fabric. I wasn't sure if I was going to have an October 16th um, update. I will be having one. <laughs> I went to go pick up um, a, a, an accessory at a sewing, a quilting store here in, in Indianapolis, in Cincinnati. And so I was there and I was like, oh, just looking around wasn't really planning on and then I saw some peppers I had to buy for you it's gorgeous so that will be happening at the end but so yeah let's talk about some stuff so what have I been thinking about this week oh so that kind of the podcast then I've been reading well listening to when I say reading usually I read Migrations by Charlotte McCon McConney Oh, it was really lovely. It was, I've been having a bit of a desolate week. <laughs> um, that which was, you know, gorgeous and desolate. And the writing was really beautiful. And the story had that kind of like unraveling that's been so, I mean, it's like that's been so popular as of late. But I mean, really since Gone Girl happened where you have that, it seems like I'm seeing more and more of those books, whether they're just being pushed forward to me more or what have you. But that's kind of story that you don't, you just it's unraveled as you go like the past is unraveled as you move forward in time through the story but yeah that combined with um reading Andrew Yang's book The War on Normal People because last time I no it was on Instagram I posted something about universal basic income um and so somebody recommended his writing and I'm really excited to move forward through that book, but right now it feels really bleak. Like, whoa. I mean, it's not like it feels any more, I mean, it doesn't feel like a misrepresentation or anything like that. Like, I'm not like, oh, you were just blowing it out of proportion. No, I mean, <laughs> feels really spot on. And it's actually really helpful to see, cause I feel like so much of the message that we've received constantly from the media, is like, you know, just buy some stuff and move on. It's all okay. And, and you know, and what we see representate, represented is not the normal, you know what I mean? Like, and he talks a lot about the normal in the book, which is very interesting. Um, so it's actually really helpful to have somebody else. There's so many things that have been, wor you know, have worry, that worry me, that fester in me. And like, sometimes you have, you can talk to other people about it and they're like, yeah, no, legit. I'm worried about that too. Uh, but sometimes you just feel like, am I being like, is this just me? <laughs> Does anybody else see that the king is not wearing his clothes? Um, so if it's, it's bleak and it's depressing at this point, A, I think that there, he's going to present I feel very confident that he's going to present his ideas about how we move through it. But it's also helpful to just have somebody else like acknowledge like that. I like, Hey, yeah, this is, this is a problem. Um, so yeah. But those have been, but I've been balancing that with playing, um, Yoshi on the Nintendo Switch. I have been falling down a serious improv quilting rabbit hole. My library, which I did not even know, has creative bug classes available to shirts. Did you know this was a thing? So I was looking for improv quilting. I don't even, oh, that's what happened. I mean, <laughs> Moon and Broad, who are the makers of my my um, sheet pants, my house pants that I love so much, the Willandra pant. By the way, I'm totally gonna make some flannel ones. I'm really excited about it. Just saying. Um, but they released the Granger coat, and the first sample, I believe, or maybe the teaser. I think it was the teaser, was this improv quilted ver version. And I have been really for like three months have been like, I want to make myself a quilt, either a quilted jacket or a quilted vest. Um, 
and I realized that that makes me sound like a very 1980s I've got ceramic geese in my house that's okay <laughs> And I have been seeing it more and more. And again, I don't know if that's just because it's a, it's like something that's sort of beginning to be a trend or if it's, again, just because I've noticed it more uh, than I would have normally. But then Muna Abroad released theirs. They have a Granger jacket. Now they had a jacket that they came out with that was boiled wool. And I thought I might use it as a basis, but now they have a, a one that's specifically a quilted one. And you can either use like a pre-quilted fabric, you can use a whole cloth where you just like, you quilt it yourself. Um, or you could use like an actual patchworked, whether you use um, like traditional patchwork, traditional quilt pieces or an improv quilt. But anyway, that is all to say. That one of the teasers that they, that they posted was of an improvisational quilt piece. And I was like, so I have been seriously down that rabbit hole. And my library has Craftsy classes. And Craftsy has a series of classes. Do you see me bringing it around? Has a series of classes by Sherry Wood. And they have... She's got like a strip one and angles and then shapes. And then she has like an, an introductory, like a, like a live one that they must have done where they just did an improv... Um, fabric with another creative bug employee. Anyway, I'm down the rabbit hole, y'all. I'm feeling like improv quilting is going to be happening. I know, right? If you don't know what it is, it's just patchwork that is unplanned. It's not like crazy quilting where it's like super ornate and involved. It could really be anything. If you wanted it to be super ornate and involved, it could be, but it is improvisational. It is just like unplanned to, to whatever extent you feel comfortable not planning. Do you know what I mean? Like you can either go in with like 9,000 fabrics and just Stephen West it up or you can be like, you know what? I'm not quite there. I'm feeling comfortable with these five fabrics and then I'm going to be more improvisational on my piecing. And then, you know, you can play with scale, you can play with color and you can do that without the restrictions of formal patchwork, formal quilt piecing. Anyway, it's very interesting. And I will also say like, it's been this weird thing where I've been quilting lately and I've found comfort in like making something work like it's supposed to. <laughs> like it's very satisfying with when points line up. And I feel like that's a control thing, right? Like in the world of chaos, at least three, three triangle points laying up where they're supposed to. But then listening to these improv classes and listening to um, Sherry Wood, she, she, like, so she talks about the improv quilting, but she also talks about improv like as like a comedic art in terms of like the yes and school of thought. And that was like opening up a whole different corner of my brain where it was like, obviously I'm like learning about this quilting process, but then just learning about like trying to, certain things she said just really hit in terms of like, how do I live like a yes, a yes and, how do I live more like yes and? Because I will always, I will probably always seek control in my life. I'm a Virgo rising. But I do think it's an important exercise to, especially when everything feels so unpredictable and everything feels chaotic, is like to stretch that muscle of rolling with stuff, you know, and and letting go of some rigid thought. Especially again, like we're talking about reimagining what is universal basic income? Well, we've never really explored that as a nation and what that could mean. And so yeah, the tendency is just to be like, no, that is not what we know. Boom. But what if we approach it with a yes and? Like, what if we approach it with like, oh, okay, well, that's not something I've really, like, I see things that are popping up in my head that are problems with that, but let's approach it from a yes and mindset. And like so much of this stuff, like, okay, somebody says defund the police and the, the immediate reaction is like, 
okay, defund the police, yes, and. Like, what does that mean? Like, how do we move, like, beyond just, like, that initial, like, shutdown moment into, like, how do we open up these paths? Because we really need to reimagine things in such a drastic way that we've got to be in that mindset. Like, and again, that goes back to the whole... Um, environmental and like fossil fuel consumption and he talks in that interview with um oh I'm sorry I forgot it already but the crazy town guy <laughs> in that podcast interview that I talked about a while ago he talks about the rear ruralification of America and I have found and I was like yes yes <laughs> When he's talking about it, talking about, you know, like, again, like, traditionally, we're like, oh, to save resources, we must all be in urban areas. But that's not, but that's not necessarily what has to happen. Like, we can reimagine these systems so that, like, rural America has more vibrant small town economies. It has, you know, the ability for people to get to access to medical care and groceries and you know right now if you move into the middle of nowhere Indiana yeah you are going to be relying on um, fossil fuels to get you to the grocery store every other week but that wasn't always the case and like I don't know I was oof. met somebody at the bakery when we rode our bikes to get bread at the bakery and there was a lady there who had her e-bike with like the it was like a cargo e-bike that has the big like basket is not the correct word um but the big why is my doctor calling um uh, it has like the big anyway it's a cargo bike and i think they look scary because i watched one episode of amazing race where they had to ride them in amsterdam and it looked horrifying because it's like your center of gravity is completely different because everything's in front of you and but neither here nor there uh, we were talking to her about like how she's got like 40,000 miles on this e-bike and how she, they've gotten rid of a car and, and anyway and of course Bill and Joanna who do a knit spin farm and who have saw wet farm um, they use e-bikes to take their stuff to, to market and what have you it was just I want to craft all the things and reimagine all the economic systems. Let's go. <laughs> you know, that's where I'm at. <laughs> and also have ceramic earrings that are so cute and like tiny. Oh my gosh, right? I gotta show you because there's, oh, I'll show you this way. Okay, so I'll put a link to her Etsy shop in the YouTube show notes, but um, her Etsy shop is, is, is it Love? L-U-V-K-T, I think. Now that I'm saying it, I'm not sure. Da, 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 da. I hate reels on Instagram, by the way. Like, let TikTok be TikTok. Okay, it's underscore L-U-V-K-T underscore on Instagram. And she makes the cutest ceramics ever. And I definitely have purchased more than one thing, but one of the things is this, are you dying? She's got super cute crocheted uh, stuffies too, but this pin cushion, thank you. Uh, it has like a felt insert in it for your pin. Are you dying? So anyway, I purchased a pair of earrings and she also sent along, she's just, started to make some of her earrings into stitch markers like um like locking progress keepers like do you s sorry the, hey, the camera is like a weird place today is it gonna oh yeah I did do you see this little fox how cute is he he's stoneware Anyway, her stuff is super cute. And so these earrings are from her as well. And darling. Oh my gosh. Do I know how the camera works? No, I don't. Oh, should I start? Whatever. Go look at them. So by the way, that podcast that I told you about was not <laughs> the um, Crazy Town podcast. And, in, and specifically the one that's interviewed 
where he's being interviewed by somebody else. It, it, it all, I mean, there's definitely like, it feels heavy in many ways because it is like, oh my gosh, we are out of control. We are sending things across the globe for no reason. And we're doing all this bonkers stuff. But it also has a lot of, there are a lot of solutions and thoughts pr you know, put forward. And yeah, obviously nobody's like, oh, well, this is the exact solution. This is what we need to do. But it's tempered with positive thought and ideas and what have you. There are ceramic bear earrings for your brain. I'm just saying. Okay, wait, maybe that's what this title is. <laughs> Been bad about watch getting titles lady lately. Oh my gosh, right? Oh, other good news. So that was that, that was that. Improv sewing, yes, doing it. Oh, so then I was like, so, but I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna make the jacket yet. The Muna and Broad jacket, the Granger jacket, is that right? I think I'm gonna do a vest because I really like vests. I can't stop thinking, when I say vest, I automatically think of like that early 90s trend for the like brocade vest with the satin back. So it's really hard for me to even say vest. <laughs> But like I use my um, down vest a lot in the winter because I do not like restriction in my shoulder area, especially when I'm driving and things. So I like that. I, I really like my quilted down vest. And so I thought it would be really fun to make something like that, to make outerwear that's like that. Um, and so I, that's what I want to do first, I think. Also, it's a lot harder to fit arms and bodies easily for me because I have big corn fed arms. So I think I'm going to try that first and then move on from there. But as I was looking through patterns, like Style Arc has this super fun pattern called the uh, Allegra jacket. I might need to make it because it's got like that balloon tulipy kind of thing, like my Sydney dress. It's available in a jacket and a coat. But they're these fun shapes, which I'm really, I think would be really exciting to explore. I might just like use a bedspread to make I'm <laughs> going full on crazy, y'all. <laughs> like, <I, laughs> like I'm gonna be like hand printing re rollification t-shirts. Except they won't even be t-shirts. They'll just be like house dresses. <laughs> wearing coats made out of old bed spreads and ceramic bearings. Okay, maybe I'm not the best advertiser for this ceramicist, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you do get earrings, they are not this, like this is a different earring finding, I think is what you call them. Then is they're originally on lever backs, which I do really like, um, but my ears lay so close to my head that the orientation of the of the fox just was like facing out instead of forward. So I just switched the finding because I have weird ears. Also, I'm afraid of jump rings. I'm so rough and so not a delicate flower that I'm constantly like catching things on things and and jump rings and I just don't get along. Like I lose stuff all the time off of jump rings. I'm the worst. I can't be trusted with nice stuff. <laughs> Unless I make it as bulletproof as is humanly possible. It's true. It's true. I just bear, I'm just a juggernaut. I just barrel my way through. That's who I am. Probably not gonna change. Oh my gosh, what else? Okay, so those are all the things. And what else? Oh, soup season, ugh. Oh, that takes, okay, no, I should talk about that too. Okay, so then I, the other thing that we did this week is we went for our eye exams. I took my daughter in for her eye exam, um, which thank goodness her eye have leveled out. We've had like three years of not crazy, huge eyeball changes, which I'm super thankful for. But anyway, I needed to get mine done too, because I was having so much trouble 
I was even thinking my distance vision was getting poor and my close-up vision seemed to get much poorer. Like I was prescribed bifocals the last time I went, but I didn't, I don't like them. I have progressives and they make me super nauseous. So I just do a lot of this when I'm working or this, actually it's always this because that stays in place better. So I just, and then I, oh, okay, I'm watching the thing on the show. Or if I want to watch the show and work on my things that I need to see, I just put readers over top of my <laughs> I'm classy like that. Um, but I was thinking they were getting worse and I had a major surgery about a year ago. And you know, last times when you have a surgery or like a baby or anything big health wise happens, they tell you your vision can change. And so I just thought it was related to that. So I went in and I thought, okay, you know, my close up vision's getting worse. I'll definitely go to the bifocals or the progressives or whatever. And, uh, and maybe they won't make me as nauseous because like, it'll be a stronger prescription in the like reader portion. So we're doing the, the eye exam and he's like, so have you noticed your eyes being dry? And I was like, no, not really. And then he starts to put the thing over my face. I'm like, oh, you know, actually for about a couple months now, when I wake up, my eyes do feel super dry in the morning. Like they hurt for just a moment or two. And then like I blink a bunch and then like, I just, it's okay. And he's like, your eyes are so dry. <laughs> he's like, your vision is absolutely fine. You just need an eye drop. I mean, fine, like my glasses are fine. I don't know what, I don't know if it's a menopause thing. I don't know if it's cause I'm on a different medication and all of a sudden, but like suddenly my eyes are just like desiccated wastelands and I have to put artificial moisture in them, but it's, <laughs> but I can see again. <laughs> I really like when you go to a medical professional and like, they actually solve the problem. It happens so rarely, right? It happens so rarely. They can just be like, and he was just literally like, yeah, you need to buy this $10 bottle of eye drops, not prescriptions over the counter. Uh, yep, I did, I needed to buy those. But like my eyes didn't feel dry the rest of the day. Apparently they were, they were all shrunken and prune eyeballs in there. Of course those can't focus well. I am going to get another pair of bif- I am going to get a pair of actually lined bifocals and try those for a while. And then also he suggested when I got my other super expensive progressive lenses, it's so expensive. The people that were giving me the glasses said it didn't matter like how big they were. And I normally would, I used to always get pretty shallow frames and he's like, yeah, you probably just need a bigger frame. <laughs> But I'm just getting them from Zenny because I'm not spending $400 on a pair of glasses. So I'm getting some new bifocals. We'll be seeing those soon. I got them in the $6 frames because I just was trying them out. <sighs> what are we talking? I mean, I'm so glad you came over and you're just letting me vent. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, let's talk about sewing. So part of this thing is like we're moving into soup season. I am kind of anti-soup during the summer. I know it's, I know that's a polarizing topic. I also eat pineapple on pizza. I know. But anyway, so I, but I do love soup in the winter, in the fall and in the spring. And we do often heat our soups in the microwave because I do prefer to make one pot of soup and then eat it all week. But then you do run into the, the factor of like having a super hot bowl. Well, I s solved that for myself in having ceramic bowls with a handle on them. But other people in my house have not figured that out. So I've been wanting to make some of these like bowl cozies forever and I just haven't. So I finally did. Um, Crafty Gemini, who has tons of YouTube videos, and it's super cute, has a video about making these doodahs and they work perfectly well. Yay them. Now the only thing I did different is she just has you so here to attach the quilt batting to the fabric. Basically you have two squares and you put quilt batting on each of them, 
you put them right sides together, quilt batting out, sew around, turn it inside out. There's a point, you also make this thing happen so that it sits up, but whatever. That's in the video. Just giving you a general overview. However, I found that when I did it that way, when I washed them, they just like, they like, it didn't, it just, so what I did, what I did on the next one is that before I sewed it together, I just quilted each, the front and the inside and the outside. I quilted them more than was suggested. And I like the way they washed up and held together. Now they're still separate from one another, right? They're not quilted, all four layers not quilted together, but it's still, the quilting kind of like kept it from going all crazy, the extra quilting. Um, this one is the first one that I made that I did not like that it bubbled up. And I just went through and just kind of smashed it together and did some more quilting in the middle um, just so that it would be useful and usable because otherwise it was just too wadded up for me. But now it's fine. So anyway, so I highly recommend that if you've got a sewing machine, you can totally do these by hand because they're little guys. Um, but they are so useful. And also it's very cute when you get to just pull your little bowl out like that and you get to carry it around like this is, is very satisfying to me. I don't know why, but it is. These are ancient fat quarters. I have no idea who they are designed by. Okay. You just need a 10 inch square for the outside, for the right, whatever. You need two 10 inch squares of cotton fabric and two 10 inch squares of cotton batting. You just need to make sure the cotton batting is 100% cotton that doesn't have scrim or like any sort of like glues in it um, because there is a concern that they might melt or like just not be food safe, even though your food's not technically touching it. Like, I don't know, fumes, whatever, just cotton is good. So that was good. What else happened? Okay, so then I have a big thing that I'm working on. Um, I'm working on my fall kitchen table cover. And, okay, I'll show it to you. It's not done yet, I still have to do the binding, but I'm really pleased with it. I just wanna make sure I'm not gonna run over a dog. Okay. So this is the same line. Last time I showed you that cheater print is the Riley Blake, I think it's called Give Thanks. Um, this is the same fabric line. I had purchased a layer cake, which is just 10 inch squares or whatever they call that. Um, and so there it is. Yes. I did not have a layer cake of the white, which is Kona cotton bone. Um, it's like a warm white. So I just had yardage, so I just cut it roughly into 10 inch squares, and then I used those um, cake recipe papers, papers. And so each 10 inch square gives you four smaller, well here, I'll show you in here, gives you four of these triangles and one big triangle square. Um, as, as long as you use a 10 inch print and a 10 inch solid or whatever, you don't have to use solid, you can just whatever you want. Um, so yeah, there's like a million different ways you can put together half square triangles, but I have seen a couple of these recently that I really liked with one big triangle and then four smaller ones. Some people do it like an ombre where they start, you know, in one, well, in one area and move through and they might make all four of these the same color as this triangle next to it, whatever. You can do whatever you want. Sure jam. But so yeah, I'm really excited. I will tell you this, um, when it was in this stage, like in the, when I just had the whole thing together, I was like, this looks really one dimensional. Not really sure about all this white in here. Not really feeling it. What have I done? It's okay, it's all learning experience. So this has, normally you would not wash a quilt like before you attach the binding. I have started the binding. The binding is sewn on. I just need to hand tack it on the other side. Um, but normally you would not do that. Normally you would, and then, oh, sorry, I forgot. I also just did some little strippy rectangles along the edge because I needed it to be just a tiny bit bigger. Anyway, normally you would not do that, but 
because I like to put mine on top of my table, like I don't necessarily like it to hang over, um, it makes sense for me to wash it before I put the binding on because I can trim it to the to the closer size that I need. And yeah, you can kind of estimate like most cotton battings are gonna have like a three to 5% shrink rate, but I just don't trust it. It's like a swatch. It's like, that's eh, just a suggestion. So what I do is just wash it, then trim it, then put the binding on, which I've also washed, so it shouldn't shrink more. So that's why it's it's all crinkly and nice. But I was really not sure how I felt about it until I washed it, which I should just know that it's gonna be okay. Right? The backing is just a solid, or it's just a um, print from that same line. And this is what the binding is too. So yeah, I totally dig it. But wouldn't it be cute as a coat? Just saying. Although I do kind of want to use, I need to make something with wool batting because I really do want to make my coat wool batting because hi, wool core. <sighs> or my vest, whatever I make. Oh, I still cringe when I say the word vest. <laughs> but I do use those vests a lot. So yes, 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 yes. Also, I have like one polyester fleece vest that I wear a lot in the house. And it would be nice to have like an easy care alternative to that. Um, Cause of course I can knit myself one, but I don't really like to wear a lot of like sweaters when I'm working because my job involves so much string and it does stick to sweaters more than um, like cotton fabrics. So that's one of the reasons I wanna make myself a quilted vest. I think it would be just a good, easy wear thing to have in the house. So, But yes, I'm also going to make you a bag. Um, if you support the podcast via Patreon, PayPal, or Ko-Fi, you'll be entered in to win. I'm going to draw those next time. Um, and so I need to, one of the reasons I should do this is because I have this laying around because I'm going to make you a zippered bag that's quilted so that, again, you can be at the table with me. That's right. So, um... So if you contributed to the podcast financially in the, oh my gosh, the third quarter of 2020, you'll be entered to win. And I'll give that to you next time. I just need to pull the data still. Okay, what else? Okay, that's all the sewing. Let's talk about knitting. So I just had a terrible fear that I wasn't recording, but I am. Oh, I guess I'll talk about that first. Okay, so I finished my co Koro, Koro, K-O-R-O, K-O-R-O, which is a shawl pattern by Olga Jazzy Knits. But I decided that I wanted to make mine into a cowl. So doesn't it look good? This is made in a DK weight. The pattern is for DK. Um, this is Hedgehog Fibers DK. Film Noir is the pink one, and I don't know what the gray one is. Now, I decided that I was gonna do, for finishing, I was just gonna do a big pink stripe because I often just like the way that looks and it makes it much easier to graft. I knew that if I was grafting this pattern, it would be a bit of a challenge. Um, I think it would have been fine though, if I had just worked in, like, if I would've just grafted it like here essentially. I think it would have really worked well, but I also kind of like that big, I like a big stripe in a cowl sometimes. So I don't know, I'm going back and forth whether I should have done a narrow stripe or a fat stripe, but I'm still okay with the fat stripe. Um, but so yeah, I took just one skein of each of those and, oh shoot, I've got hair sticks in. This is very complicated, Put on infinity cowl with hair sticks. Okay, there we go. And so, oh, perfect, right? love it and also the wrong side is super fun too so if you like if you're a person is like oh i got the wrong side but look at the wrong side's fun you could have both of them showing right so yay it was very fun to knit 
and it had a good potato chip quality um, in that it was easy to memorize and it had lots of little tiny places where you could feel like you had accomplished something, which I really appreciate. So yeah, isn't that pretty? I'm going to send that off to the recipient. Can you tell I really like it? <laughs> I love it. So hooray for that. And then, okay, and then I finished my frog and toad and actually finished their clothing. Um, so here they are in all of their woolen splendor. Aren't they so cute? So I used two strands of fingering held double versus the DK that suggested in the pattern. So I think my sweater's a little tiny for my frog. Like he, he's had a little, he's had a little too much quarantine cookie. Um, but he's still super cute. Isn't he handsome? And then Toad in, in his overalls. So cute. I'm really going fully crazy. <coughs> I was like, I'm going to make them a little box. Do you remember the story with the cookies on the shelf? <coughs> I'm going to make them a kite. I'm going to make slow down, you know. But they are terribly charming. So he is made with Brooklyn Tweed and Kalma, Rauma, Rauma fingering. <laughs> Hell double. He's made with a Green Mountain Spinnery and a um, Bartlett Wool's Hell double. This is Barrett Wool fingering, Wisconsin Woolen. This is Bartlett Wool's in another color and this is Jameson and Smith. They turn out so cute. In fact, they turned out so cute, I'm making another set of them. Oh, that's right. So, let me see where they are. Too much knitting. Sorry, I got a little <coughs> in my throat. Okay, so now, okay, it's kind of disturbing but because it's just his skin. I'm sorry, it's kind of creepy, but. So, I have another frocks who needs to be blocked and put his eyeballs in the sockets and the whole shebang. Um, and he is, let's see, my other frog was Brooklyn Tweed Artifact. He's Brooklyn Tweed Button Jar held alongside um, Knit Picks Palette. And that's not his tag. Nitpicks palette in Shire Heather, which seems very magical. So he's a bit bluier, greenier, and he is a little bit darker, mossier, clearly. But, and then I have Frog started. He's got a leg, and I'm on his second leg, and he's the same combination of the Green Mountain Spinnery and the Bartlett. So he's, I did, you can kind of see there's waist, you probably can't see, but you might be able to see. There's waist yarn in for his eyeballs and for his arms, which is different than the pattern suggests. Um, but I did the waist yarn for the eyeballs on frog, and I did like how that worked. So yeah, I'm working on another pair. They're very exciting. And that's the Frog and Toad pattern by Frog and Cast. It's available on their website. Okay, so then what else? What have you seen? That's all you've ever seen. Okay, so then the thing that I've probably gotten the most work done on, besides the Frog and Toad, is I have a sock started. This is woolen and Nosh. It's her deep fall colorway and it's my favorite sock, the 90% um, Superwash Tarhi 10% Nylon. I love that sock yarn so much. And this is the deep fall colorway. I am knitting the Twizzler socks by Tangled Becca. And how cute is that? 
Oh my gosh, do you see my stitch marker? I do not need a progress keeper stitch marker or whatever on this sock at all. The Tilting Planet has these super cute ghosties. Oh, that's ridiculous. By the way, she uses lever back earrings for her progress keepers. And I think I'm on board. They're so much easier to open than the lobster clasp. And they still feel very secure. They're a very fine wire. So they seem to stay, you know, they seem to go in to, between your stitches very easily. But how cute is this stupid ghost? There's a glove. And she has pumpkins and skulls and tree people. So I did. I don't need that on there, but sometimes it's just nice to look at a cute thing. So I'll move my progress keeper to where we talked this time. So yeah, I think I'm pro the lever back. Yeah. At first I was like, I don't know how I feel about that. Now I'm like, I think I'm on board. Okay, so there's that. Oh, and the um, Woolen and Woolens and Nosh had a um, free mini. She had a sale where she had free mini. So this is um, a mini of the toe is of hers as well. Okay. And then the last thing I have to show you is a new thing. I cast on for the Brioche shawl, which is a pattern by Carissa Browning. And it looks like that. I actually really was thinking, I really, um, KG Do on Instagram, by the way, if you don't follow her on Instagram. So many gorgeous things. Um, she just finished a pressed flower shawl, which is a shawl by Amy Christophers. And I thought for sure I was gonna knit that. But it's mosaic and so it involves a lot of slip stitches and I was just like, I don't know if my tension is reliable in these like tense times that I can do the big slip stitch project. <laughs> so I decided on the brioche instead. I loved to knit brioche and my favorite combination is one strand of hand spun, one strand of commercial. Not that you need a strand of either one, but I just like the combination. And I am using hands that I recently commit completed. This is the mica colorway, which is a mill colorway from Inkle Nook Fibers. And then this is a DK weight, 100% superwash merino. It is Predictability by Suburban Stitcher. So I purchased these, I think last year, it's SSK. No, I'm not, I think last year, SSK. I bought two skeins of the, and so wouldn't that have been so pretty in the pressed flowers? Because I don't know if you can tell, but this hand spun has a ton of pink and lavender in it. And yet it is pred predominantly the gold. So I thought that'd be so cute for pressed flowers, the pink flower against the gold background, but yeah, this little stitch I was just for you. So I started, so I just have a tiny, tiny bit done. So I think this is the right, I don't know, I can't decide which is the right side, which is the wrong side. But anyway, so here's one side and here's the other, right? And I'm sorry, I just didn't do this to decide justice because you get the fun pink showing through when you give it a bit of a stretch. So yeah, yay brioche is fun and squishy and all around enjoyable okay that's all the knitting and all the wooling and all of the quilting and all of the things so next is just gonna be shameless self-promotion so if you don't want to see it I'll totally talk to you next time okay so I will have a shop update fatsquirrelfibers.com October 16th 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It will have these three styles in it and potentially a drawstring. I don't know. Just wait and see. Okay. 
Are you ready? You'll see why I had to buy it, right? It's squirrels and it's gorgeous. What? So these are Quilters Cottons. They're pre-washed and I have a cotton batting. They all have an unbleached cotton interior. So this is the large wedge size. It's great for a two skein shawl, maybe three skeins if you don't kind of mind smashing. And then, right, come on, I had to, come on. So this is a sweater size, again, quilters cotton, a cotton batting, and then the last one, because I love Charlie Harper so much. And they've just reissued this print. This is one of the original ones, um, and they've just reissued it in the Christmas line. Um, so I went ahead and just bought some of that. <laughs> Oops. So yeah, I couldn't help it. Come on. Squirrels and owls and cardinals? Oh my. Right. So those are all very cute. They will all be in that update. Okay. I think that's all. Oh my goodness. So much of my voice. I hope that you get outside. That's a really good hope for you right now. Like the outside is, is the outside and whether it's spring where you are or fall where you are or it's hot or it's cool it's still the outside and it is constant and within our lifetimes is constant <laughs> and grounding and yet also opening of horizons I wish you all of those things